should you really go to ghc conference ghc stand for grace hopper celebration it's one of the biggest conferences almost 30000 people go to that conference and girls and guys both it is known for women in tech and its celebration of that it's one of the also biggest recruiting conferences so a lot of people ask me and especially international student ask me that should they invest the money because it's going to cost you anywhere from $600 to $1500 plus the flight tickets and all of that should you invest it is it worth the investment what does the conference look like what do you prepare for that how do you get job offers do you get job offers all these questions we have covered in this video kirti who is the guest of the podcast she was participant in ghc 2022 she actually got sponsored to go for this how she got sponsored we also cover that from your university so find out that trick as well but she cover how she prepared for it how she got interview calls how she got in the conference she got the job offer from barclay how she got it and what was the interview process and all of that we cover over everything in detail i hope you find this valuable and i hope you get it prepared and you get the answers whichever you need if you have any more further question on ghc please let me know in the comment section and now enjoy the video people who don't know let's start like with a quick in- intro like where are you from what do you do currently i am working as an infrastructure engineer at barclays uh, in new jersey and uh, i moved to the us in 2021 to pursue a masters in data science at the University of Rochester in New York mm, but before nice. that i was doing my undergrad in computer science in triple uh, it kerala for people who don't know ghc what does it stand for and like what is that conference about so ghc stands for grace hopper celebration and uh, it is celebration of women in tech and computing uh it is just to recognize efforts of women in tech and bring like women from all areas of tech together can men attend it i know it's targeted towards women in tech but does men attend it and can they attend it i when i went to the conference from my personal experience i saw a lot of men there as well it's not just a conference for women it's just to mm-hmm. like recognize women or uh throw some light on the efforts of women in tech anyone can attend it there were a lot of people uh whoever was recruiting they just can't be women right like if you can walk us through what uh, what happens in the conference i know there will be like keynote speaker etc so the conference is uh for 3 days like 3 3 and 1/2 days usually and uh, the first day i got my id we usually have long queues there's about like 30000 people attending the conference so wow uh, it's so huge there's going to be a lot of queues so we usually get our ids the previous day before the conference starts and also there'll be some kind of stalls set up in the expo like career stalls you could go and talk to people who are there representing the companies there as well the first day is usually the keynote and then you can choose to go to talks you can choose to go to tech talks that are held and you or, or you could choose to go to like the career expo and it's mostly between i think 9 to 5 and after 5 mm. it's uh, more of uh, external networking events that individual companies hosts so mm. google had their own uh, networking event amazon prime had their networking event uh, so there is a lot of opportunities to uh, go to these events meet like senior leaders from different companies mm. have like mm. uh, pep talks with them get some uh, recommendations or like just get to meet them maybe they could be a lead to your next job opportunity so uh, yeah so i'm assuming you pay or like either you get paid uh, like you get sponsored or you pay for this uh, and then you get this agenda like all right there's what three days is going to look like here are the companies who are participating here are the booths uh, here's the map i'm i'm visualizing this i i don't know because i've been to different conferences so that's that's my guess uh, and then you pick and decide like all right i'm going to go to this this and this and i'm going to that's that's all like so is that kind of that's right uh but i would say it's more chaos because yeah right. uh, i was planning a lot that you know i have to attend these events i have to cover these things but things always don't go the way they should because mm. it's a big crowd and uh, you end up doing something different from what you've planned and that should be fine like 
you should yeah, think yeah. that yeah so why did you attend uh, gsc like where, like what motivated you to attend it because uh, obviously you came here you were doing your masters like what prompted you like oh i should go and attend it so i was also at that stage where i was looking for jobs looking for internships mm. uh and i met one undergrad during my second sem and she was giving an interview uh for linkedin so i asked her uh, how she got that interview and she told me that she attended gsc virtually mm. uh, that year and she got it she got the interview from gsc uh, wow. so i was surprised like wow uh, an, an interview from linkedin sounds like a dream so maybe i should give this conference a shot and i started researching about it and then i applied for it yeah mm. um right that for people who don't know there is also virtual option and then there is also in person and in person you have to book i'm assuming that the fees doesn't cover the booking of the hotel and travel etc you have to do it on your own yes. uh, and yeah it just covers the entrance and then the 3 days but uh, and then virtual is obviously you can attend it from wherever you are uh, so I know you got sponsored from your university. How did that happen? How does that happen? Like, if someone is watching, is like, I want to be like Kirti. Like, I want to get sponsored. So, what you, what did you do that you got sponsored? So, some universities in the US do sponsor uh, their students to go to GHC, and they have some of their budget, like the uh, either the career center or the program coordinators. that are working with you do have some of some budget uh, you could actually just not for ghc but you can request for budget uh, to go to any other conference you like like some of mm. my friends they were visiting like uh, um mit for like a one day event and one day hackathon kind of a thing and then coordinator sponsored them because they had shown like a proven case of you know how it can be useful they have written all the documentation and you just present it with to them and they most probably accept it because you are showing the interest you are being proactive and taking the initiative so mm. in my university um, it was different like um, people who were wanted to go to ghc could actually apply there was a special application that was sent out by our program coordinator to apply uh, to ghc and there's a bunch of questions like why do you want to attend the conference what will you do at the conference how will it benefit our university if we send you so all these questions are there and then you write down the answers how you like how when you apply for a university you write the sop right something like mm. that and uh they selected it selected me based on that application it sounds almost like a scholarship application for going to the uh, uh ghc yes. and uh, i'm assuming when they sponsor it not just uh, sponsoring the fees but then also like stay and travel and all of that is that true yes they do sponsor yeah. or you could also get like a partial scholarship from your like mm. program lead uh they will be willing to do that you could say that you will spend for uh, the conference ticket you just need money for travel and back or you you could say that you need money for the conference uh, ticket and then you will spend the money for travel and back mm. the, and get a partial scholarship as well because mm. as students like money is a big thing and yeah. we yeah. all go through that uh, struggle yeah. while we are a student so yeah right so again uh, uh just to recap on this uh, your university especially had a link to apply for it because they know there is a lot of students every year who would want to go so they already had it assuming some universities don't have this they can go to their career center department and say like hey i would love to go this is there a scholarship can you like fund me to go to this universities something like that they can outreach them and then hopefully uh, they will accept it based on whatever you do it and you've seen some cases which which has approved like that uh one of my uh, friends he went to like he's a guy he went to a sports analytics conference that happened in MIT and mm. he applied for it he got a scholarship like they'll say okay this is how much we can give like this is 500 you can spend it however you want and 
you can either spend it to get the conference ticket or you can spend it to travel flight or something however yeah. you can use it and you you know you have the money to go there one of the reason like you mentioned as well and one of the things that i have heard a lot before even when i've done podcasts with other people who have gotten jobs and internships through gsc is that true like lot of it, it is a recruiting event and do people do end up getting a job offer or an internship offer from that conference i saw that question coming sometime so uh, uh it's case by case i would say so for me it was true uh mm. the current job i'm working in is uh, actually a job that i got at gsc so barclays was hiring in bulk uh, because they wanted to ramp up and get their uh, male female ratio to 50 50 and uh, they were hiring a lot wow. of women there and uh, that's how i ended up and they had a lot of roles like infrastructure engineer data scientist data analyst software engineer etc and uh, i was particularly interested in the infrastructure engineer role which nobody wanted because it sounded very boring so <laughs> i can I'm, i'm curious to know more about that role but continue yeah yeah so i interviewed for that position at uh, barclays booth on spot uh, there were like senior leaders from barclays interviewing uh, people there and initially i went there i stood in the queue uh, and then i was cut off and they asked me to come the next day because the queue was so long and they had to end the interviews mm. i went like at, at around 5 which was end of day so they just had to ask me to come next day and the next mm. day morning the conference starts at 9 am i went to the uh, conference hall at 7 am i sat in the queue for 2 hours wow and, uh, i went inside and still i was the third person in the queue at 9 am wow. that was yeah it was an adventure and when i went there i was like greeted so beautifully like i love my leaders at barclays they are like amazing yeah. amazing leaders yeah. i was uh, greeted by them and uh, they asked me what role i want and uh, they had interviewed me for that, that is so role. cool like they are like all right we have five roles which one are you interested in <laughs> that is that is so awesome but ha huh, cool uh, yeah. so you they obviously take mentioned a look at you, they just took a look at my resume and they were like um what role are you interested in and then they called the smes for that role and um, mm. they i just got interviewed by them there were two rounds one was a technical round where they asked questions about like that were related to the role as well as uh, the qu- questions about tech stuff from my resume and there were questions about um, values leadership skills teamwork skills mm. so it was called mm. mindset mindset and values round so that that round was the first round i had and then i had a tech mm. round and okay was, so there were two rounds for you yes okay so initially when i went there they took uh, i think they took the mindset and values round but they were also asking mm. me like technical questions in between like what's the difference between like this and this what's the difference between a sql and no sql deep database and like uh, basic uh, basic yeah. questions like yeah. that and uh, in the second round they, asked, they it was totally about my resume and uh, what projects i've done and also about why i want to work in the company like why do i want to work for a bank uh, mm. so make sure when you go to these interviews when you're standing in the queue you learn about the company you know learn about their culture and values before you mm. go there and there was like a 3 4 hour gap between the two interviews so first interview mm. when it when they told me to come back okay i knew i passed the first interview so i was relieved but <laughs> there was a 4 hour gap to the <laughs> uh, second interview and uh, i was just sitting there between like chaos and like trying to focus and study stuff from right. my resume yeah uh and did they tell you like what the second round is going to be about so you went they did the first round they looked at your resume they started like doing the first like basic round of uh, you knowing you a little bit and mindset round etc 
and then they said like all right come back after four hours and this is going to be your second round we're going to talk up like we're going to ask you technical question like did they give you any hint like what the second round is did they tell you exactly when to come back or was it just like you were just waiting and hoping that they will call you they told me when to come back exactly uh okay. it was just because one of the interviewers went to um give a talk and he had to come back mm. so i just had to wait for him my case was different I, like i had someone who got selected uh who got selected for the same role like one of my friend and i kind of asked her how the interview went and uh, what was the interview structure and everything just was being proactive even before the interview happened uh mm. so i was kind of aware of what uh, was coming for me in the second mm. yeah your barclay story so you had to know that they were hiring uh, and you had to prepare for as like you probably went way ahead and prepared for it like not during the conference like someone can't just wake up and go someone would have to prepare their resume and interviews and all of that before even they went so what kind of preparation did you do before you went to the conference before i answer this question i'll tell you one thing uh mm. I got to know that Barclays is interviewing on spot at the conference in person only after mm. I went to the conference because okay. I was just talking to a group of people um while I was taking a break at the conference and they told me that Barclays was hiring on spot so I was like I ran to the place and <laughs> I went to give the interview but before right. that uh usually everyone that goes to GHC is prepared mm. like it's pre- he, they are prepared to the core um mm. i did a lot of uh, research did a lot of youtube youtubing googling uh, connecting to different people on linkedin all of that so part of my journey was uh, prepping my linkedin i was mm. uh, posting stuff about ghc that i i posted uh, post saying that i will be attending ghc so whoever whoever else is attending ghc can like see that i am attending maybe they'll mm. offer me an interview kind of a thing mm. so mm. i used hashtags like hashtag ghc 2023 yeah. 2022 hashtag yeah. like vghc v for virtual vghc mm. 2022 and stuff mm. like that and you just post so others who are uh, going to ghc will reach out to you and say hi or if there's a recruiter that that's noticing you that then you might be in luck as well so mm. i made a post on linkedin and then i also prepped my linkedin like with all, i just made sure that all the descriptions that were there in my linkedin were accurate and mm. i posted all my projects i also mm. created a portfolio to make it mm. easy for me to reach out to recruiters uh i just posted a portfolio of myself with a resume and uh, all the projects i've done and everything is that is that live right now i guess so it's been a while since i saw it but i post i i'm using github.io to host it so it must be live oh wow look at that <laughs> nice uh, i am excited to read this one um but Yeah cool so that's you worked on this portfolio i just wanted to show people like and, and then obviously people will i'll put your linkedin so people can connect with you but uh, you worked on this uh, you started prepping your linkedin you started posting it uh, did did that kind of work like did anyone reach out to you uh, not necessarily recruiter but maybe other people who are attending yes so before i went to the gtc when you register for gtc you have access to the gtc portal and all the jobs that are listed under gtc and there mm. is something called gtc da- uh, resume database uh, it's highly recommended that you post your resume as uh, like as early as possible after you register for this conference because recruiters are going to look up through the database and they're going to select some uh, some candidates and then offer them an interview in person at GHC as well mm. so usually uh, very in very rare cases they have like on spot interviews like Barclays was very generous last year they were hiring so many people and they had the requirement because they were scaling up 
and mm. that might not be the case every year right so mm. how usually things work is interviews are even scheduled even before the conference happens mm. so i had two other interviews that was scheduled before the conference so one was uh, from analog devices there was an ml engineer position that was posted in the jhc portal and yeah. i saw the recruiter's uh, name under that under mm. that uh, job listing i had applied for yeah. it but still uh, i reached out to her on linkedin i mm. posted a message saying that i've applied for this role here's my portfolio uh, i'm very much interested and i see that um, my skills fit this job and everything and then she instantly texted me back saying that 4:30 pm to 5 2:30 to 3 which slot do you want to take <laughs> so i was like wow <laughs> this is the power like it's all incremental effort like right uh, right i had my resume to just like get the interview and mm. things that mm. uh, kind of lifted uh, my confidence to like reach out to people uh, more mm. effectively you can start registering for the conference like 4 5 months uh, i have been seeing the ads because i've been researching at least 4 5 months ahead of time so from timeline perspective uh, if someone once they make up their mind that all right i'm going to go they should like immediately start preparing their resume and linkedin and all of that to not just before even they go but also like uh, all this thing which you said they'll get access to jhc portal and uh, start applying for jobs and reaching out to recruiters etc is that fair statement to say yes yes so okay. it does take some planning and effort uh before you go to the conference uh mm. just like instantly knowing about it or booking it won't get you there like we have to do a lot of stuff uh in between because you have already mm. spent like a lot of money to go to the conference yeah. of course you want to use the opportunity to the best if you were to do this again uh, let's like time travel back in 2022 would you now invest your money uh, to go again to the jhc definitely i would definitely even if if i knew that 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 was the experience i was going to go through i would definitely mm. put in the money and go there yeah yeah and i know when we were talking offline you also mentioned like it's not just the the job opportunities but also the energy people uh, the vibe um, vibe <laughs> people yeah. have during the conferences i mean so like what what do you feel like when you are around find a lot of inspiring stories uh and when you go to these networking events in the evening you meet a lot of people you can talk to them and like knowing about someone's stories uh is just priceless because it's mostly inspiring and you know you you see people that have made it that are in the mm-hmm. place that you want to be tomorrow and um just having a conversation with them will kind of lift you up who should not attend this conference because we you know obviously we talked about like why you should attend and like what you should do to attend it but who should not attend this conference anyone can attend it i can't tell that this person cannot attend it but <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah uh but uh i would say don't attend it unprepared uh put in the time and effort to prepare for the conference or uh just prepare yourself for the energy the amount of energy that's going to be around you and uh you have to take in a lot uh mm. if you are an introvert like i i was an introvert now i'm an ambivert but uh there's a lot of energy by the end of the day you are like socially drained so mm. make yourself uh like be prepared for that uh don't be uh, socially drained just just have fun uh, just take what life throws at you if someone says hi in the queue talk to them have a conversation uh, connect with them on linkedin um i met one person not able to recollect her name but i know her face and she was working in uh, amazon prime air mm. uh it's the team that builds like uh drones to don't do drone delivery and stuff so uh, yeah yeah so yeah she- uh she was really sweet like she, i had a chit chat with her 
she was in no way related to any recruiting or uh, any kind of uh, hiring she was just attending a conference and when you talk to those people you feel inspired you know how how many opportunities there are in tech like it's not just sd mm. is right there's so many other right. roles that you can explore mm-hmm. um mm. when these days when people are talking about um techno managerial roles they only think of product management but there's so many <laughs> other roles so many other roles yes. when you meet yeah. a lot of people who are working in these roles you know what roles are there in tech and mm. today you might not have the skills to be in that mm. role so you you mm. maybe you start off like an sde or a tech mm. analyst but tomorrow you you will know that this is how i want to guide my uh, way this is how i want to pave my way to be in that person's position like to be in that mm. person's role because i like that job role Make and also resume. go there with yeah. a goal like yeah. many people go there to make connections some people like me i went there to get a job even though it's not gonna happen just be happy with the outcomes of whatever you're gonna get from the conference don't regret going there because you won't i'm just yeah saying simply you yeah. won't yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, i love it um what's the advice would you give to people who are planning to go in 2023 or maybe now they watch it and they're like all right i missed this opportunity but i'll go in 2024 for sure what advice would you give them uh, from your experience uh you have to be on the lookout very be very proactive um make sure you get the ticket if you are a student get the academic ticket and uh, talk to a lot of people like who have been to gsc because um uh, you just keep hearing about it and then there's this three days it's like the clock is ticking the three days you just want to make the best use of all the three days so talk to mm-hmm. a lot of people and be as much as prepared as you, you can prepare your linkedin because uh you'll be connecting with a lot of people there and then they instantly see your linkedin and they might find a job for you right there mm-hmm. you never know so be, be prepared with your linkedin uh i made a portfolio it's not mandatory but it was a part of my job search so it helped and mm-hmm. um also look at all the companies that are going to come and make mm. make a list of the companies i must visit and i could visit so make mm. a list mm. of the companies talk to a lot of people around you uh, because they will guide you in the right way where uh, if a company is hiring they they would know because they might have been to that booth and you were not there also be prepared in the sense you if they ask you for an interview now would you be able to give so mm. be prepared yeah. for an interview uh be prepared with your resume your resume has to like be clean and neat and like instantly showcase your skills be prepared with all the projects and your experiences that you have written in your resume uh because a lot of people they look at your resume and they're like hmm that project looks interesting can i know more about it uh yeah. so there's a lot of conversations like this when you go to booths if you're going in person make sure you take like professional clothes and uh, make sure you take like foot spray because your <laughs> legs will ache uh, oh, yeah. and uh, that's a good one yeah take like a half empty suitcase uh, if possible because this there'll be a lot of swag uh, mm. you will get like t-shirts bluetooth speakers all sorts of things uh mm. from different companies so carry a small uh, notebook uh in case you meet someone you can write down their name and then uh, write down where you met them because you'll be meeting a lot of people uh it's hard to remember whom you met when and uh, what kind of a conversation you had with them so mm. write down uh like details some details and their name so that you mm. don't lose track of it and after the conference you can revisit this notes and like reach out to people again elevator pitch i think that yeah. was one thing you yeah. also told me yeah be prepared with your elevator pitch if you had a uh, 90 seconds with a recruiter and you both are in an elevator and the elevator is going from some floor to some floor what would you say to the recruiter what would you say to him that will get you an interview or uh 
a lead one of the points i missed was that there are uh, for virtual people especially it could be useful for them mostly there are one on one sessions that you can book with recruiters these are like 15 minute uh, sessions with you and the recruiter and these also ha- get like released a uh, couple of days before the conference so the slots open and like close very quickly they sell out like hot cupcakes and uh that um they are very important like because you are virtual you're already far away you're just watching the conference you're not having any human interaction uh it's good to have like these sessions some uh, there are also group sessions i guess there's one recruiter and a couple of people like five to six people and you have like good conversations with them uh and you can make a connection even though you're uh, virtually attending gtc so uh make sure you book these as soon as possible when they open and uh, keep a look out i think gtc has an app yeah i was using the gtc app as well and uh, they post all these notifications also all uh, you can follow gtc on all um social media channels like linkedin instagram uh that's where they post their updates that okay today uh 2 pm we are going to open these slots so mm-hmm. you have to know these updates and be proactive um before these slots sell out so kind of a good segue into pitching uh for people that they should subscribe because uh, i'm going to bring kirti back for uh, to talk about her experience at university of rochester uh and i realized that that was different than rochester institute of technology so thank you so much again like this was so insightful i feel like i i would want to go again like even though i have job and uh, like i would just want to go for an experience uh, if i can can't wait to bring you back and also i'm going to leave your linkedin so people can spam you and ask you all kinds of questions <laughs> but <laughs> don't spam her <laughs> uh but uh, i can't wait to bring you back until our next one keep smiling keep hustling <laughs>